Hello and welcome to this week's midweek service. It's wonderful to be able to join with you today. In a little while, I'm going to be reading from the prophet Jonah, uh, one of my all time favourite stories in the Bible. And we'll share a little bit about that with you when we get there. Before that, I'm going to uh, share a short prayer, then we'll sing a song together, and then there'll be a longer time of prayers. As we begin this time, let us stop. Still our hearts and our minds. Come before God as we are. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are the God of our whole lives. There is no part of life which you are not interested in, that you do not care about. But you love us and you lavish good gifts upon us every single day. And Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We give you the glory. And Lord, as we are here in your presence, may you help us to see you and to know you. Lord, be honoured, we pray. Amen. And we're now going to have our first song.
Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, you are the God of the whole world, not just of us. And so, Lord, we pray for the world. Lord, we pray and ask that you would watch over and help the world. Lord, there are so many troubles from illness and disease, this pandemic, to natural disasters, to political upheaval and unrest, to war and violence, to slavery, persecution, trafficking, to violence and gangs, criminals. Lord, for the poor and the hungry, those who suffer unjustly. Lord, there are so many needs in our world. We'll just pause for a moment and in the quietness, lift up situations, people that you know before the Lord. Lord, in confidence, we know that you answer and hear our prayers. Lord, would you move swiftly and come and help. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. I'm now going to read from Jonah, uh, the prophet Jonah, chapters 3 and 4. Just a recap on the story. Jonah is a prophet uh, living, this is in the time before Jesus uh, is around, maybe several hundred years beforehand. And uh, there are some really nasty people called the, the Assyrians, and their main city is a city called Nineveh. And God calls to Jonah and says, Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach against it. Tell them off for all the wicked things that they are doing. That's what I want you to do. But, Nineveh, uh, but Jonah sorry, uh, doesn't want to go to Nineveh and he takes flight and instead of heading east, he heads west. He gets on a boat which is then caught in a storm and the sailors are really scared and they're shouting to each other, uh, why is this happening? And they're trying to battle against the waves, heaving on the oars and eventually they start throwing things over the board because the boat is taking on water. And then they realise this is happening to us because somebody has upset their God. And so they cast lots and the lot falls to Jonah and they say, what have you done? And he tells them who he is and why he is there. And they are absolutely astounded. And so he says to them, throw me overboard. And so we can't do that. And they continue to try to battle against the waves. But eventually they throw Jonah overboard. We'd expect the story to end here with Jonah drowning. But no, we read that God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah spent three days in the belly of this big fish. During that time, he had time to think. And in, whilst he's there, he lifts himself up to God and says that what he has done has not been right. And he says, I will go and follow you. Then he spat out onto the dry land, and this is where we join the story. Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city. Proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes 
covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles. Do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But to Jonah it seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fly fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head, to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I'm so angry I wish I was dead. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 320,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I said earlier that this story of Jonah is one of my absolute favourites. And I think it's my favourite because of two reasons. One, we see the love and the compassion and the grace of God literally overflowing on people who don't deserve it. And the other thing is because occasionally I see a bit of Jonah in myself, getting a bit grumpy and upset and annoyed at things. And so I love Jonah. I love this story because it really speaks to me. Did you notice that Jonah was so reluctant to go to Nineveh to preach? He didn't want to go. And he reveals later on why he didn't want to go. He said, I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. What a wonderful thing to say about God, that he's compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. And that is the God that I love and I serve. Jonah, though, saw this and he didn't like it. I don't know whether he liked it for himself, probably did, but he certainly didn't like it for those that he hated. These Ninevites, the Assyrians, were very violent people quite horrible. They did disgusting and horrible things. And Jonah didn't want them to live or survive or to have any part in the kingdom of God. But God did. And that's the difference. God did. And because of his great and awesome love, he relented. When the people repented, 
when they sat down in the dust wearing sackcloth, when they humbled themselves, when they turned from their evil ways, God had mercy. Mercy upon mercy, grace upon grace. And he helped them. Why? Because God made them. Like he made the plant, he made the people and the animals of Nineveh. And he made you, and he made me, and he made everybody who lives in our village, in our county, in our country, and upon the whole world. Sometimes we like to keep faith in Christianity for ourselves. Sometimes we say, I don't think that they would do very well in church. Or maybe even, I hope they don't become a Christian. But you know what? The heart of God is very different. He wants them because they're his children. He made them and he loves them. And that is the wonderful gift of grace. Because without that, you and I, none of us could stand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have had grace on us. Lord, we thank you that we have that opportunity to turn from our wicked ways to be forgiven and to receive life. And Father, we pray for all those who don't know you. Lord, we pray for those who are wicked, who do detestable things. Lord, we pray that you would help them, that you would call them, that they would turn and receive mercy. And Lord, we pray for those people that we just don't like or just don't want in our churches. Lord, I stand before you today repenting of that. And if you are at home are the same, please do repent of that. Say, Lord, I was wrong. Lord, we pray that you would help to change our hearts. And Lord, we pray for people to be drawn into your kingdom, that they would know life and light in all its fullness, in and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. And we're now going to sing another song.
Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to join with you. Let me just pray before we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. And I pray this in and through the powerful and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Saviour who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Take care. Goodbye.